Monday, the Democratic National Convention kicks off at the United Center in Chicago. Thousands of delegates will officially nominate Kamala Harris as their party's presidential candidate. The Windy City is no stranger to the DNC. It hosted a notable Democratic convention in 1968. That's when then-President Lyndon Baines Johnson stepped aside and his vice president suddenly moved to the top of the ticket in the midst of a politically tumultuous year. As easy as it can be to draw parallels between 1968 and 2024, insiders, past and present, say this is no democratic deja vu. Tom Hansen has the story. Life magazine covering Johnson. That's LBJ. LBJ and that's and Hubert Humphrey. Humphrey. As press secretary to Vice President Hubert Humphrey, Norman Sherman witnessed history. The Vietnam War. The Civil Rights Movement then just 10 months before the 1968 election. I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Johnson came saying he wouldn't run. Humphrey had had 20 minutes notice and suddenly he was maybe the heir apparent. An heir apparent with little support and plenty of competition. I am announcing today my candidacy for the presidency of the United States. President Johnson didn't immediately endorse Humphrey, setting the stage for a tense Democratic National Convention in Chicago. I seek to lead a great nation. While Humphrey gave his acceptance speech, there were police beating young kids, old kids, some delegates to the convention into paddy wagons, bludging them. I was on the 15th floor of the hotel, leaning out, sniffing tear gas, watching little figures 15 floors below being thrown about. It was a very uh, devastating moment. So devastating, Sherman believes it cost Democrats the election. Humphrey lost to Republican candidate Richard Nixon. 1968 has to have provided some valuable lessons for what we can apply as a country moving forward. What would those lessons be? Be together, resolve your differences. The people making decisions in the Democratic Party are driven by these lessons. Jeremy Surrey teaches at the LBJ School of Public Affairs. When you shift candidates like this, it's very important to have a clear message. The Democratic Party has to be very clear now. It's rallying not just to Kamala Harris, but to the party itself. When you're a vice president and you're in the shadow of the president, it's important that you step out of that shadow and really define yourself as a leader. Ashley Etienne would know. She worked as VP Harris's communications director. One obvious difference between then and now, the candidate at the top of the ticket is a woman. And a woman of color, not just a woman, a woman of color. And I think that matters. The reason why it matters is because it speaks to the progress that we're making as a nation. This cover was published 60 years ago, and here we are today with a president stepping down and the VP now at the top of the ticket. Well, I'm shocked. I really thought we were one of a kind. As Democrats once again gather in Chicago, they hope to learn from history, not repeat it. The convention coming is going to add momentum, respectability. People are going to see not Billy Clubs, but Joe Biden saying good things about her. For CBS Saturday Morning, Tom Hansen in Coralville, Iowa. It was interesting being overseas for so long, and the one question I got the most was, is the U.S. ready to elect a woman president? I don't have that answer, but I just, when at that very moment where she was talking about being a woman yeah. and a woman of color, it dawned on me that was the question we had the most. Yeah, I got the same thing in 88 when Jesse Jackson was running in Kenya. People were asking me that. It can happen, and I, you know, just sort of like, until it does, you Until don't know. Until it does, you don't. You don't know.